How do you defeat the flesh? How do you defeat the mole? Here it is. Let's read it together. Galatians 5.16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Great article on Joe Namath, right? Broadway Joe. All the old guys know who he is. Young guys may not. Quarterback at Alabama, quarterback for the New York Jets, Broadway Joe, man of the world, wore mink coats to the locker room, predicted that the Jets would beat the Colts in the Super Bowl, and did. He was the aqua velva man. He was in Playboy. He was the man. He was the man. Well, Joe, after he retired, you know, he got into broadcasting, and there he is just recently, uh, asked to comment at halftime on this big game that Alabama's playing on national TV. So the, the girl from ESPN Sports says, so Joe, you went to school at Alabama, what'd you think of the game so far, this half? He's drunker than snot. He's ten sheets to the wind. He's an alcoholic. And he goes, instead of answering the question, he looks at, at uh, the ESPN reporter who's a female and says, I want to kiss you on national television. Talk about ultimate humiliation. So, on, And then she asks him again. She tries to like reframe the question and say, so do you think so-and-so is playing good? I really want to kiss you. <laughs> Had his beer goggles on. You know what I'm talking about? You know the beer goggles, right? That's what makes the... Anyway. Um, so it's so humiliating he gets into rehab, right? It's so humiliating. So a year after rehab, USA Today interviews him. Uh, when dining out for business, he now sips Diet Coke or uh, club soda. That, however, listen to this, doesn't prevent his imaginary but very real drinking sidekick, Slick, from arriving uninvited. Quote, my most recent temptation happened two weeks ago when I was in Alabama. Slick kept whispering in my ear, oh, it's all right. What's one drink going to do? But I'm not alone. We share these things in our meetings. His flesh has a name, Slick. So let's read Galatians 5.16 together one more time. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of Slick. Circle live by the Spirit. I want, to, I want to make this really practical for you. You say, Kenny, how do I know I'm living by the Spirit? It's when you're saying no to slick. Amen? It's not some mysterious, uh, weird thing. Yes, there are fruits of the Spirit. Yes, there are gifts by, of the Spirit. There are evidences of the Spirit. But the most basic one is that you're saying no to slick. Amen? You say yes to God, and you say no to your flesh. I remember becoming a Christian at 17. I got heaven, forgiveness, all this great stuff, advice, counsel. You know what I didn't get? Victory over temptation right away. So you know what guys who look at pornography and who click on the net, you know what they like to do? I'm going to say a dirty word, but it's real. Masturbate. That's what they like to do. And you know what? That was a problem for me. So then I become a Christian. What do I do now? Well, the Bible says that the righteous man utters wisdom. The law of God is in his heart, and his feet do not slip. You see that in Psalm 37, 31, and you see it in Luke 4 when Jesus was tempted. So now I'm going into my area of temptation, the shower. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. It's worked for me for 20 years for years. You know what? If you don't know how to wield the blade, you better learn. You take the Word of God and you deploy it. It's like a sword. It's an offensive weapon. When you're tempted, I find it's hard to pray or quote Scripture and sin at the same time. Amen? So bring it into being. Speak it. That's the problem. we got a lot of Christian guys. You know what they're like? Ken dolls. You know what you see when you pull the pants down on a Ken doll? Nothing. Nothing. It's because they don't know how to wield the blade. we got a bunch of spiritual Ken dolls with no cojones down there. 
A God's man, a warrior, he knows how to wield the blade. He knows his weapon. Problem is, you're not soaking in it. You're not hiding God's word in your heart so that I might not what? Sin against thee. That's right. Psalm 37, 31, make it your mantra. The righteous man utters wisdom. The law of God is in his heart, and his feet do not slip. Do you believe it? Do it. Don't wait. Where's your red zone area? I know for the young guys, it's kind of like mine. It's hard. It's a natural process, okay? But you got to battle. Here's the, here's the reason why. Young guys, listen up. Because when you get into marriage and you're in a conflict with your bride, guess what the temptation is? To go back to Egypt, to go back to a habit, to get a better feeling. Conflict doesn't feel good. I don't know how to do the conflict because I don't have the character. And so I'm going to run from the conflict, and then I'm going to go back to a behavior that I know will make me feel good for about two minutes. The ring doesn't make you disciplined. Character makes you disciplined. Practice makes you disciplined. And what quoting Scripture does is it catapults you over the temptation and into liberty.